Hello, Bobcats. I'm Isabella Vanderlande. And I'm Jalen Brooks. Coming up on GC360. The aftermath of last week's tornado. How's Milledgeville coping? The Max is again under renovation. We'll tell you what's happening this time. And we'll go dancing at this year's spring concert. All this plus more on GC360. This is GC360, where news comes full circle. Milledgeville and other parts of Baldwin County are cleaning up after a tornado struck the area last weekend. It was a scary experience for many, but just how destructive was the storm? Our reporter, Sophia Ricketts, has been assessing the damage. On Sunday morning at 7.45 a.m., Milledgeville residents were woken up by this. An amber alert warning them to take cover from a tornado approaching their area. Residents retreated to their basements and interior rooms as the EF1 windstorm swept through middle Georgia, reaching nearly 100 miles per hour and damaging parts of Baldwin County in the process. Tree branches and debris hit vital areas such as Atrium Health Novacent Hospital and North Columbia Street, breaking windows and causing exterior damages to local establishments. Can't tell until the power come and test it out by a technician, but other than that, there's nothing I can do. Landlord say they have to put a brand new roof because the roof lift and shift it, and it's heavy damage. So we may not be able to do open soon until the landlord uh, fix the complete roof. I don't know how we're gonna get it. That, I hope you have a good insurance. I got my own insurance, but we're gonna see how it's covered by nature. So we'll see what happens. Aside from storefronts, 20 local homes were struck by fallen trees, damaging residents' houses and vehicles. Right before it happened, they heard the whistling of the train and the family got in the bathroom and took cover. And then all of this happened. And they said it was only seconds. Along with local homes, wind gusts and branches took down power lines across the county, especially close to State Route 441, where roads were blocked off. Georgia College and residents across Milledgeville lost power for hours after the storm. Atrium Health briefly lost power, but the hospital used its generators to get power back up. Luckily, the city of Milledgeville and Georgia Power quickly took action to restore power and clean up the debris immediately after the storm. And all residents had their power back by Tuesday morning. But the severe aftermath of the tornado led the city to declare a state of emergency. Later on Tuesday, Governor Brian Kemp visited Milledgeville to look at the damage and discuss the steps for moving forward. Uh, Wayne briefed us earlier uh, around 10 businesses and around 20 homes that were hit in the local community and we'll continue to work with GEMA, our federal partners on response and potential aid depending on qualifications as we continue to do the assessment. Our main goal right now is making sure that we're keeping everybody safe and we're helping our private sector partners in the local government restore normal operations with power. Luckily, no Milledgeville residents have lost their lives during the storm and no injuries have been reported. But the city of Milledgeville will still feel the impacts of the tornado for weeks to come. For GC360, I'm Sophia Ricketts. Well, so you survived last weekend, but do we have more stormy weather ahead of us this weekend? Here to help us sort through that is Grace Wood. Grace, are the storms behind us for now? Well, I'm afraid not, Jalen. Thunderstorm season continues Saturday evening, Saturday morning but we won't expect anything as bad as last weekend. In fact, it looks like thunderstorm will clear up later on the day on Saturday, and temperatures will be at a high of 81 and a low of 48. Watch out for those 10 to 15 mile per hour winds during the storm. In the event of severe thunderstorms, take shelter in the nearest building. And remember, tornado watch means to look for the, out the possibility of a tornado, and a tornado warning means to take action immediately and go to the 
to a closest, the closest basement or a room with no windows at the lowest possible level. Thankfully, Sunday's weather will turn around for the better. There will be sun in the morning, but clouds for the rest of the day. The temperatures will be at a high of 75 and a low of 50. Next week, we'll mostly have partly cloudy skies and there will be a slight chance of rain throughout Monday and Wednesday. Isolated and scattered thunderstorms may occur Thursday and Friday of next week. Well, we've enjoyed the beautiful weather so far today with a high of 75 and a low of 50. Take advantage of the beautiful sunny skies with little to no wind. This will continue on into the evening hours. Friday morning, skies will become cloudier as the day goes on. Winds will be at a high of will be at a steady pace of 5 to 10 mile winds per hour. Temperatures will reach to a high of 82 and a cool and cool down to a low of 66. Clouds may also clear up in the evening. That's it for my end. Bella and Jalen, take it away. Thanks, Grace. President Kathy Cox is hosting a town hall meeting on Friday. This is in collaboration with the Student Government Association, and students are invited to talk about issues of concern with the administration of the university. When I was a senator, we passed a resolution calling on us to have regular town halls with the administration, and um, we're finally getting around to actually implementing it. Um, President Cox will be there, the Vice President for Student Life, uh, Dr. Dan Nadler will be there as well. Um, it's just kind of an opportunity for students to go to the administration, voice their concerns. Um, there will be pizza it's from 12 to 2 on Friday. And yeah, it's going to be a really good opportunity for people to kind of inform the administration about concerns that they might have. This meeting takes place in the Magnolia Ballroom. The first ever research day at Georgia College was held this week. This was an opportunity for students to present their research, while others came to support their classmates and friends. There were dozens of research projects on display. So our study is about uh, lesson learning, uh, the leaders, and uh, culture. Um, we, what we did was we took interviews from professors who are knowledgeable about the subject and tried to give an event where we gave some people a rundown. It was basically a launch point for people to do more research. My name is Amelia Glazer. I'm a public health major. And for my study, I used the Marginal Index Guide, which is a questionnaire asking grocery stores and convenience stores if they carry fresh fruits and vegetables and whole wheat bread. The data that we have collected, only 88% of our county is convenience stores with less healthy options, whereas the 12% have the healthier options. Research Day also featured events such as the Wellness Picnic on Front Campus, which gave GCSU students the opportunity to relax and enjoy free food and gifts. Next on GC360, Georgia College hosted another career fair to give students the chance to, to make connections with different companies. More renovation work on the MAX. Plus, we'll take a look at sports. All this coming after the break. Hi, my name is Susie Parker. I'm a student docent over here at Andalusia Farms. Andalusia served as the home of the famed American author Flannery O'Connor from 1951 until 1964 of her passing at 39 years old. It was here that Flannery famously wrote and had all 32 of her short stories published. After her passing in 1964 though, the property was eventually entrusted with Georgia College and State University. It is now uh, our proudest achievement to say that we are the nation's newest National Historic Landmark. And on top of that, on March 25th, of 2023 we intend to open up our interpretive center and then ultimately return the entirety of the home back to how the O'Connors had it when they were here. There's a ton of stuff that college students can come and enjoy, especially as a Georgia College student. Not only are tours free, but the entirety of the property is free to roam. This is including the front porch in which we actually leave unlocked for people to come up, have a seat in the rocking chairs, and maybe do like a study session. But even more so than that, we have a nature trail down by the pond, which is about two miles long. It is very, very beautiful. And we also have Aster and Mrs. Shortly, our peacock and peahen, who are pretty fun to visit as well. Another really fun thing that a lot of people like to come to Andalusia for is for photography. Not only of, you know, photography of the forestry and things like that, but we've had several weddings out here um, that have had their photos done. But on top of that, this is a wonderful and beautiful place for Georgia College seniors to come and have some of their portraits done. And it's very fitting that it's here on site with Georgia College. news 
anchor. Oh, what do you want? Like a 10 seconds. Can you just read this announcement for me? Okay, 10 seconds. Okay. This semester, GC360's introducing a new show, Cat Talk. We will showcase a new guest each month and deep dive into some topical issues of concern to you. You may also see some of our guests play some silly games while they're here with us. You won't want to miss this from GC360. This is Isabella van der Lende. So join me each month for Cat Talk right here on GC360. You're watching GC360, where news comes full circle. The Maxwell Student Union building is undergoing another phase of renovation. So what is this one all about? GC's Facilities Planning Department blocked off the patio in front of Chick-fil-A as part of the work being done on the sewer line. I was a little confused at first at what was going on, but then I kind of remembered that there was a bunch of leaks and stuff with the pipes happening over Christmas break, so I thought that might be part of the reason why there was all that fencing and stuff over there. I think it's good that they're trying to get it done as soon as possible. It may be inconvenient for some people, but I think it's good that they're trying to get these things fixed. Facilities planning is in phase two of their renovations to the first floor of the Maxwell Student Union. After the area experienced several sewage leaks, an investigation was launched into the cause. There was a sewer line with an improperly sized line um, that was causing it to back up into the space. And so since we didn't want that in our pretty new renovated space, um, we decided to do a little more digging um, and found that the issue with the line was running somewhere between um, the middle of Donahue Lounge and this manhole over here. Um, so. We blocked off this space just in case we would need to dig up the whole patio um, in order to locate the issue with the line. The department moved to fix the sewer line problem immediately, using contingency money set aside in the project budget for these types of situations. The original plan saw the pipe work completed during spring break, but was pushed back due to rainy weather. Facilities planning next aims to secure funding for renovations to Hurdy, Chapel, and Kilpatrick Hall. In addition, completing phase two of the special collections project. This is Jalen Brooks reporting for GC360. Thanks so much for that report. Milledgeville and Georgia College continue to honor the memory of American writer Flannery O'Connor, a native of Milledgeville. Andalusia Home, run by Georgia College, is a tourist attraction where people go to learn about Flannery O'Connor's life. This week, Andalusia got a new addition. An interpretive center was dedicated. Trim Paul reports. <laughs> In 1951, at 25 years old, Flannery O'Connor moved to Andalusia Farm to live under the care of her mother. She lived there for 13 years, and during that time, she completed her two novels and 32 short stories centered around the American Southern Gothic genre. The farm's environment influenced the setting of many of her writings, and people of Milledgeville often inspired her characters. Andalusia recently celebrated the opening of the new interpretive center with the ribbon-cutting ceremony. We are super excited because today was the ribbon cutting ceremony for our new Andalusia Interpretive Center. And so this is really exciting due to the fact that it is going to centralize all of our artifacts in one location and allow us to continue and renovate the house back to how the O'Connor family had it during Plannery's residency here on site. Along with that, this is going to expand our exhibition space as well as our collection space and our gift shop space. So this is really a big expansion in general and we're all super excited for this fantastic event. The building holds several exhibits showcasing historic items from the time when Flannery O'Connor lived on the property. This extra storage space will aid in making the restoration of the properties of Andalusia run smoothly. Ultimately, it is my goal to acquire and get accreditation to the American Alliance of Museums and become like the Governor's Mansion as an affiliate of the Smithsonian Institution, something that are very laudable and aspirational goals for us here. And we also hope to put air conditioning in the site as well to make it a little bit more comfortable in July for individuals to visit the property as well. Andalusia offers tours Tuesday to Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday from 2 to 4. Go to the Georgia College website for more information on how to take a tour of the beautiful home of Flannery O'Connor. I'm Trin Paul reporting for GC360. The Career Center held a Creative Industries Fair during the week. 
giving students the opportunity to make connections with potential employers from across this is an ideal opportunity for students that are interested in going into creative field, whether it be an internship, a full-time position, or a graduate program. This is, we have a lot of marketing firms. We've got um, Alliance Theater here. We have WMAZ TV that was going to be in attendance. We have a couple graduate programs, including our MFA in the College of Education. So any kind of opportunity that students might be interested in is going to be here at the fair today. So I think this gives an ideal and kind of intimate opportunity for students to have employers and programs come to campus that are looking for for them. So students might not be familiar with a lot of these organizations or these programs or they might not be feel comfortable going out and finding them themselves. So by bringing them here to Georgia College's campus, it gives students the opportunity to kind of just walk from class, come over here and see all these opportunities for internships, full-time positions, and graduate programs. Georgia College hosts events like this regularly, so keep your eyes out for events like this. It's time now for a look at sports. For that, let's turn to Hayden Flynn. Hayden? Thanks, Jalen. <clears throat> Kiara Santora was awarded her first career Bobcat Athlete of the Week honor. She was also named Peach Belt Conference Player of the Week. Santora put up a 5-1 record this week over three matches. She teamed first with Emma Fleming in doubles, nabbing a 6-1 win over Augusta and a 6-1 win over Savannah State. The tennis team is back in action Friday, March 31st at Centennial Center Tennis Facility. The first match is set for 1 p.m. as they take on Lander University. Out on the softball diamond, freshman shortstop Sydney Lancaster was awarded Peach Belt Conference Freshman of the Week. Last, Lancaster had an outstanding weekend going 5 for 9 at the plate, batting for a 556 batting average against Lander University. She highlighted the weekend with a flawless 3 for 3 performance and a stolen base in Game 2 of Saturday's doubleheader. She also flashed her leather with a perfect fielding percentage on 10 chances at shortstop. Bobcat softball is back in action Friday, March 31st at 3 p.m. as they take on Augusta University on the road. The baseball team was supposed to play on Tuesday, March 28th, but bad weather postponed the game to May. The team is back in action this weekend for a three-game series versus conference rival North Georgia. Game one is on Friday at 6 p.m., game two is Saturday at 2 p.m., and game three is Sunday at 1 p.m. That's all for sports this week. Back to you, Bella and Jalen. Up next. The spring concert is finally here. What did students think about the performances? And a mobile petting zoo will tell you all about it. And our reporter Ava Cartes goes through this week's entertainment stories. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Susie Parker. I'm a student docent over here at Andalusia Farms. Andalusia served as the home of the famed American author Flannery O'Connor from 1951 until 1964 of her passing at 39 years old. It was here that Flannery famously wrote and had all 32 of her short stories published. After her passing in 1964 though, the property was eventually entrusted with Georgia College and State University. It is now uh, our proudest achievement to say that we are the nation's newest national historic landmark. And on top of that, on March 25th, of 2023 we intend to open up our interpretive center and then ultimately return the entirety of the home back to how the O'Connors had it when they were here. There's a ton of stuff that college students can come and enjoy, especially as a Georgia College student. Not only are tours free, but the entirety of the property is free to roam. This is including the front porch in which we actually leave unlocked for people to come up, have a seat in the rocking chairs and maybe do like a study session. But even more so than that, we have a nature trail down by the pond, which is about two miles long. It is very, very beautiful. And we also have Aster and Mrs. Shortly, our peacock and peahen, who are pretty fun to visit as well. Another really fun thing that a lot of people like to come to Andalusia for is for photography. Not only of, you know, photography of the forestry and things like that, but we've had several weddings out here um, that have had their photos done. But on top of that, this is a wonderful and beautiful place for Georgia College seniors to come and have some of their portraits done. And it's very fitting that it's here on site with Georgia College. news anchor oh, what do you want like a 10 seconds can you just read this announcement for me okay 10 seconds okay. this semester gc360 is introducing a new show cat talk 
We will showcase a new guest each month and deep dive into some topical issues of concern to you. You may also see some of our guests play some silly games while they're here with us. You won't want to miss this from GC360. This is Isabella van der Lende. So join me each month for Cat Talk right here on GC360. This is GC360. The spring concert was last weekend, and there were so many excited students at the event. And our executive producer, Jennifer Martin, was there. Georgia College hosted a spring concert on March 24th in place of their annual homecoming concert. Students filled the Centennial Center where they waited in anticipation to watch performances from some of their favorite artists. Battle of the Bands winner Andalusia was the first opener for the night. They played various covers of songs as well as an original song written by one of their band members. The second act was the band Coin. They put on quite a show with lots of fun lights and even a giant ladybug at the back of the stage. It was quite the sight to see. Student media organizations were able to send representatives for an interview with Coin, so my fellow co-producer Emily Smith and I were able to talk with the band before their performance. We asked how they felt about this opportunity and what they were looking forward to. I mean, I stumbled into it. Yeah. We met yeah. each other our first day of college, my first day of college, yeah. and, um, okay, and we met Ryan through a mutual friend, and then, I don't know, now we're here, honestly. And it sounds silly, but like, it's just one big thing that's another thing, and then, I don't know, just like, it's like a traveling family band. <laughs> From my perspective, we were trying to get Chase to play his first, like, club show. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you need to record an EP to get to play a show in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, so do that, and then we got the show. Yep. And now we're here. Yeah, one show was another show <laughs> in place. Yeah. Yeah. The main performance of the night was from none other than Young Gravy. Young Gravy and his DJ made their performance interactive by throwing food, such as Lunchables and technical difficulties. The Campus Board of Activities is always coming up with fun events for students. Recently, in front of Russell Library, where students took a break with some farm animals. It reduces stress, you know, you get to pet a cute animal, but also at the same time, it's the sort of perfect time of year. Two of CAP's coordinators spoke on this event and explained some of the purposes of the zoo. Well, uh, at the core of it is just to kind of bring students together and kind of mingle a bit with each other, have little fun little events here and there, just kind of some take the edge off of all the work and everything going on, academics. Yeah, just about like, big yeah, thing. kind of just the same stuff we do for every CAP yeah, event, just to bring the community together, yeah. uh, kind of like make people feel more at home on a uh, campus. It was freezing like a couple days ago and then the, the weather's all no, over the place this time understand. of year so the longer we wait for outdoor events usually the better because you know people you know, it's nice and sunny everyone's out here able to enjoy it we're not shivering or anything so over 450 students took turns petting the animals and taking pictures with them while cap enforced a few measures the only like the only two like main ones we really had to like actually enforce are just like no dogs or, or like around the animals and then just the um, the fact that we can only have like 25 people max around the cages at a time. With this and other events, Campus Activities Board is an organization that provides opportunities for unity among Georgia College students. Follow them on Instagram at GC underscore CAB for updates on events. Reporting for GC360, I'm Ava Cortez. Ava gives us a scoop on entertainment this week. Ava? Thanks, Jalen. An update on the Selena and Haley Bieber story. In a statement, Selena urged her fans to respect and treat Haley with kindness. This statement was posted on her Instagram page. Apparently, Haley had reached out to her to try to resolve the, the feud be between the two. And Selena seems to want the ongoing feud to end. Another, um, another Disney Channel star, Dylan. Spr Sprouse uh, has recently got engaged to Barbara Palvin. The couple has been together since 2018. Dylan tries to keep his business private, but he could not help but share the news with the world. Billie Eilish has a new career. She's now an actor. She's staring in the Emerson original show called Swarm. Swarm is about a young girl whose obsession with a pop star does not end well. Billie Eilish is not a main character in this film, but her supporting role is worth watching. That's it for entertainment. Back to you, Bella and Jalen. Thanks, Ava. This is where GC360. This is GC360.
We're News Comes Full Circle. I'm Jalen Brooks. And I'm Isabella Vanderlande. When we are not on the air, make sure to follow us on our social media pages. That's facebook.com slash GC360 and at GC360 News for Twitter and Instagram. Always available to you. GC360, where news comes full circle. Thanks for watching. <laughs>